let us now take up the discussion of uh, steam turbines. Uh, this illustration uh, shows a supercritical rack and cycle with uh, two stage uh, reheat. Uh, the um, uh, boiler pressure uh, at state one uh, is 300 bar, 650 degrees Celsius. And the condenser pressure in this case is 0 0.1 bar which is uh, usually the case in most um, uh, steam power installations. Uh, it can be seen that uh, there is one reheat uh, between two and three and another one between uh, four and five. Uh, you must be uh, familiar with this um, uh, cycle and you must have done calculations um, uh, involving this cycle in your applied uh, thermodynamics course. Um, the uh, most um, uh, important or um, uh, most significant aspect of um, uh, the cycle uh, in so far as um, uh, steam turbines are concerned is the expansion ratio uh, that the steam goes through uh, from state one all the way up to uh, say state sixes. Notice that the steam is expanded from a pressure of 300 bar to a pressure of 0 0.1 bar, which means the expansion ratio in this case is 300 divided by 0 0.1, which is uh, 3000. Uh, now, this is two orders of magnitude uh, higher than the uh, value of uh, expansion ratio 40 uh, that we uh, uh, saw for uh, land-based gas turbine power plants. In fact, the pressure ratio of 40 in the case of a land-based gas turbine power plant is, is the pressure ratio at which most modern plants uh, operate. So that is the highest pressure ratio that you will see. And so there the expansion ratio for the turbine is 40, whereas here the expansion ratio is uh, 3000. In fact, in the case of ultra supercritical uh, Rankine cycle, the uh, high, high pressure or the highest pressure is uh, uh, 400 bars or so. So in such cases, the expansion ratio is even higher of the order of 4,000 or so. Um, it may be uh, recalled that in the case of um, uh, land-based gas turbine uh, power unit, uh, the uh, turbines had only about a dozen or so stages. Whereas in the case of uh, an installation like this, uh, the uh, steam turbine, as you can see, has about uh, three or four times that many stages. So here we have uh, the high pressure turbine, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> which corresponds to expansion from uh, state one to state two as or state two, as shown here. And uh, this represents the intermediate pressure turbine, which is uh, three to four. And this represents the low pressure turbine. And in addition, there could also be additional turbines um, as uh, for the requirements in the installation. So you can see the number of stages here is uh, significantly higher when compared to uh, land-based uh, gas turbine power plants. Okay. Uh, again, notice that it would not be practical or feasible to expand the steam in a single turbine from the highest pressure of 300 bar to the condenser pressure of 0 0.1 bar. So with that in mind, the expansion itself is now split into three stages as we see here, uh, HP stage, an intermediate pressure stage, and a low pressure stage. Okay. Um, even within each stage, the uh, expansion of the turbine uh, usually and uh, is uh, uh, quite challenging because the pressure ratios can be uh, quite high even uh, in, in the uh, stages uh, that we see here. So uh, special strategies are required uh, to, um, uh, to deal with the expansion in these, uh, in these stages. Okay? In addition to the differences that we just mentioned between steam turbines and gas turbines, other points are also of interest. Um, uh, for instance, in the case of the uh, gas turbine, the highest temperature in the cycle is around 1700 Kelvin, whereas here the highest temperature is around 800 to uh, 900 Kelvin or so. Although the, uh, the highest temperature is less, the highest pressure is significantly higher. And since the duty cycle for such uh, steam turbine power plants are close to 100%, uh, metallurgical considerations uh, play as much of an uh, importance in the case of steam turbines as, in, as they did in the case of uh, gas turbines, okay? 
Um, now, both land-based gas turbine power uh, generating units as well as uh, steam turbines usually operate at um, uh, RPMs uh, uh, of uh, 3000, which corresponds to 50 hertz, or an RPM of 3600, which corresponds to 60 hertz, because that is determined by the uh, supply frequency. Uh, the aero turbines that we saw, or uh, uh, gas turbine units used for aircraft engines, uh, run at higher RPMs. Uh, they are, in fact, the high pressure turbine there runs at 10,000 RPM or so. Uh, so these are some of the important distinctions uh, and similarities between steam turbines and the uh, turbine portion of a gas turbine power plant. So what we will look at now is how um, uh, we handle or how um, uh, the expansion in each one of these stage, which itself uh, has a very high expansion ratio, how such a situation is handled in practical installations. Okay, several strategies are required uh, in order to deal with this effectively, or several strategies have been utilized in order to deal with this effectively. Let us see what they are. Okay. The first one is called velocity compounding. The term compounding refers to a stepwise uh, change or incremental change of whichever is being compounded. So in this case, velocity compounding refers to the fact that velocity change uh, takes place uh, in the turbine um, in an incremental or stepwise manner. Okay, let us see what this means. Okay. So the pressure drop across each uh, turbine uh, normally takes place, uh, in this case, takes place in a single nozzle preceding the turbine blade. So keep in mind that we are talking about strategies uh, for any one of uh, these uh, turbine, you know, individual turbines. So when we say pressure drop, it is pressure drop across the either the HP turbine or the IP turbine or the LP turbine, not the pressure drop from here to here. Okay, so the uh, entire pressure drop across the turbine takes place in a single nozzle, as you can see here. So the variation of pressure here goes from the boiler pressure or steam chest pressure to the content uh, to the uh, either condenser pressure or the pressure at the end of uh, uh, expansion in that particular turbine. Okay. Uh, so in this case, the pressure drop, entire pressure drop, is converted to velocity. And the resulting kinetic energy is then converted to work across many rotor blade passages. So the velocity initially increases to a maximum value across the nozzle. And then it decreases uh, in a, a stepwise fashion in each one of the rotor blade. Note that there is a certain drop here in the first rotor. Uh, it's almost a constant in the next stator passage because the stator only redirects the flow. Then there is again another drop in the next set of rotors and so on until it reaches the final uh, exit velocity. Okay. And as the velocity decreases, uh, you can see here that the uh, steam also, uh, I'm sorry, the steam expands and consequently the blade passages uh, also increase in size. So the cross-sectional area also increases correspondingly. Since the pressure remains constant across the uh, rotor, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is an impulse stage. And notice that in this case, the stator blades merely serve to change the flow direction. There is no pressure drop in the stator blades also, and there is no velocity change in the stator blade passage also. Okay, So the stator blades merely serve to change the direction. So this is an impulse machine. And because the velocity decreases in a stepwise manner, this is called velocity compounding. The next design strategy that we see here is called the pressure compounding. And here, as the name suggests, the pressure change from uh, the inlet to the exit takes place in steps rather than in one single go, as we saw here. So accordingly, we see now multiple nozzles. Uh, there is a set of nozzles here, set of nozzles here, set of nozzles here, and so on. So the pressure drop across the uh, entire turbine now takes place in, uh, in a stepwise manner. So there is an initial decrease here in the first set of nozzles. Then it remains constant across the rotor, suggesting that the rotor is an impulse rotor. Then there is another stepwise decrease, stepwise decrease in the next uh, fixed nozzles, again constant across the uh, rotor and so on until we reach the exist, uh, exit pressure. Now, you can also see that associated with each uh, pressure decrease, there is a corresponding increase in velocity and that the velocity remains constant uh, in the uh, uh, the, the velocity decreases in the uh, moving blade passage, 
where the kinetic energy is converted to work and then again it increases as a result of expansion in the nozzle and again it decreases in the rotor as a result of conversion to work and so on until we reach the terminal velocity. Uh, notice that here the increase in height of the blades is not quite as much as what we saw in the previous case because the decrease in pressure is gradual but after some point after or after some number of stages there is a, a considerable increase in the cross-sectional area to accommodate the continuously expanding steam and we notice that here so the cross-sectional area increases here and the rotor passage area also increases here okay so the important points are that the pressure drop rather than uh, taking place in one single step takes place in many steps here like this and the velocity increases uh, in the nozzle passage then decreases in the rotor passage and repeats itself like this until we reach the exit velocity since the pressure uh, decrease takes place in steps this is called pressure compounding the next strategy that is also used is pressure and velocity compounding. So uh, what is done here is to have velocity change also uh, stepwise and pressure change also take place in a stepwise manner. That is what is done here. Let us see how this is done. So uh, basically what is done here is uh, we uh, go uh, with this type of an expansion, but instead of having one nozzle, we have maybe uh, two or three, no more than that, not as many as what we are seeing here, but uh, the pressure drop takes place across two or three uh, nozzle sets. And then in between the nozzle sets, the velocity is compounded. Okay. So let us take a look. So as we can see from here, uh, we have one set of nozzle here, another set of nozzle here. So instead of the pressure uh, drop taking place across one nozzle, it now uh, takes place across a finite number of nozzles. So hence, this is pressure compounding. Notice that the pressure decreases in a stepwise manner from this value to this value in the first set of nozzles, remains constant until uh, the steam reaches the second set of nozzles, at which point it again drops in a stepwise manner to a certain value. Of course, we can also have additional sets of nozzles to have further uh, steps in this profile. Now, in between the uh, uh, nozzles, you can see that we are utilizing the velocity compounding strategy because the as a result of the drop in this first nozzle, the velocity increases. Then the velocity uh, decreases in the first set of uh, rotor blade where the kinetic energy is converted to work then it decreases again in the second set of rotor blade and then it remains constant again increases after the uh, drop in the second set of nozzles and again it decreases in a stepwise manner across the uh, uh, rotors as we uh, reach the final uh, exhaust velocity so that is why this strategy is called velocity and pressure compounding pressure compounding because the pressure drop takes place in a finite number of steps not in as many steps as this, but finite number of steps nevertheless. And velocity compounding because the velocity changes in a stepwise fashion as the pressure remains constant across the rotor blade. So this is also an impulse machine and the stator blades here merely serve to change the direction of the uh, fluid. Notice that uh, the velocity uh, at the end of the nozzle or velocity anywhere in the turbine is the highest in this case because the entire pressure drop is converted to kinetic energy. So correspondingly, the RPM uh, of uh, this design, simple velocity compounding will be very, very high. In fact, it can be uh, unacceptably high in this case. In the case of pressure compounding, since the total pressure drop occur, occurs across several uh, rows of nozzles, as we uh, can see here, the velocity never reaches as high a value as it uh, does in the case of velocity compounding. So consequently, the shaft speed and the RPM uh, in the case of pressure compounding are uh, considerably less than what they are in the case of velocity compounding. This is always better because the centrifugal stresses are going to be cut much less in this case than before. In this case, now that pressure and velocity compounding also gives velocity uh, maximum velocity values, which are probably somewhere in between velocity 
pure velocity compounding or pure pressure compounding. Now, the last variation in this is the reaction turbine. So here, the pressure decrease is continuous from inlet to outlet. So the pressure decreases in the stator blade passage and the pressure decreases in the rotor blade passage also and it decreases continuously. So the degree of reaction here is non-zero. And the velocity, as we can see, increases in the stator as the stator acts like a nozzle. And then it decreases uh, as the kinetic energy is converted to work in the rotor blade passage. Notice that the rotor blade passage also try, uh, tries to uh, or uh, causes an increase in the uh, relative velocity component. So because the pressure decreases in the rotor, there is an increase in velocity component and the rotor blade passage acts like a nozzle, but the overall kinetic energy still decreases because we are extracting work from the rotor. So the velocity increases in the stator blade passage, decreases in the rotor blade passage, again increases in the next stator blade passage due to the pressure drop, decreases again in the next rotor blade, blade passage as the uh, kinetic energy is converted to work and this goes on continuously as uh, as we can see here uh, so the uh, the uh, rpm of uh, this design probably uh, will be the lowest or as we can expect the rpm of this design to be the uh, the lowest among all the four designs that we looked at because the pressure drop is continuous and it's uh, seen in both the stator and the rotor Okay, so this is a reaction uh, design. So these are the four strategies that are used to handle the very high expansion ratios that are seen in uh, steam turbines. Of course, um, uh, one um, would be correct in saying that this is no different from the uh, turbine part of the gas turbine that, uh, that we saw earlier, and that would be true. So this resembles uh, the turbine portion of the gas turbine uh, very much. And in fact, they are identical in that sense. But notice the number of stages that we see here is far more than uh, the 10 stages or a dozen stages that we saw in the case of a, a, a gas turbine. 